there. My name is Simon and I am the Managing Director of the Naked Grape Wine Merchant. I join you here from my shop in Alsford. Alsford, you say? Yes, the town in which the fabulous Alsford Watercress Festival normally runs. However, this year we're doing something a little bit different because we're going online for one whole week of online frivolity. So I hope you've had a fabulous week engaging and listening and doing lots of things to do with watercress during this unusual year. My job, everybody, is to taste wine, buy wine and sell wine for a living. It's a tough life. I'm sure you're all thinking, oh, what a horrible, horrible job you've got, Simon. Well, I put up with it, everybody. I put up with it and I enjoy myself whenever I can. I'm just going to talk to you for a few moments about the best wines or beers or things to drink when you're eating that wonderful watercress, good stuff, look, it's so fresh you could eat it, in fact, I might do that in a minute. So there are several different types of wine or beer that you can enjoy with watercress and the foods that go with watercress. So I'm just going to give you three separate recommendations this evening. The first one is a white wine, it's right here. Now wherever you are across the country, or indeed the world, I hope you can seek out white Rioja, yes, white Rioja, not red Rioja, white Rioja, and that's what this is here in my lovely hand here. So, this is the sort of white wine that I would recommend that you enjoy with watercress, and watercress mixed with other foods, obviously, because watercress is a superfood, but you can also enjoy it with some other things as well. So I would go with maybe some salmon, maybe some freshly cooked uh, new potatoes, and a watercress sauce. So with those sort of flavours on your plate, a nice glass of this wonderful white Rioja would be perfect. It's not an oaky wine, okay? I know you're thinking, I've said Rioja, and we often associate Rioja with heavy, oaky red wines. But this wine, white Rioja, you're looking for an unoaked version. It's made with two grape varieties. One is called Verdecco, and one is called Viura. Now don't worry if you haven't heard of those great varieties because they're mainly used in the Rioja region or in other nearby regions in central and northern Spain. So they make white wines that taste, well, just like this. They're fresh, they're zingy, they're summery. They have an extra element above your normal sort of grape varieties that you may well have experienced. Your Sauvignon Blanc, your Pinot Grigio, your Chardonnay. These grape varieties, when mixed together, they have an extra set of pizzazz, an extra raisiness across the palate and that's fabulous with the slight pepperiness that you'll get from your watercress. So you're tasting the wine. I'm still at work so I'll taste it you know for you but hopefully you can find some white Rioja wherever you are and enjoy it with some watercress. We swirl the wine around just to release the aroma. If you leave the wine just to sit in the glass it just goes quite flat and you don't really get much sort of smell coming off the wine basically. So you swirl the wine around to increase the aroma. You have a sniff, it smells fantastic. It smells summery, it smells like blossom, petals, rose petals, and a fruity citrus hint. Not a massively intense aroma, but inviting. Makes you want to drink it. Cheers to you all. So what you see me doing there is just drawing air in between my lips. It increases the flavour of the wine on your palate, and that's important, is it not? Let's get as much flavour out of our wine as we can. So this wine is dry on your tongue, but has a wide, mouth-watering freshness down the side of your mouth here. No oak, remember, there's no oak in here. Unoaked white Rioja. Crisp, fresh, summery. It's not massively alcoholic, but it is fab with watercress. And I'm going to go with salmon, new potatoes, fresh green veg. Absolutely beautiful. That's my first little recommendation for you. If you're not really into wine and you think, well, you know, I want to enjoy some watercress, but what else could I have it with, Simon? Well, you could have it in beer. Beer. Yes, this is Itchen Valley Brewery Watercress Fest. Now, you can find watercress-infused real ales in several different breweries across the UK. This one here, Itchen Valley Brewery, is about a mile down the road from where I'm stood. So I'm always going to be shouting about the local products, but hopefully you can find something maybe nearer to you as well. There's another one in Dorset as well, a brewery called Cern Abbas, which some of you may well know for the, the man on the hillside laid out in chalk, and he's got a 
why you know what you've got. Uh, we won't go into that. This is a, a real ale, a beer. It's the classic stuff. It's four percent. It is infused with watercress. Okay, it's, there aren't actually bits of watercress floating in the bottle. It's a classic best bitter, with a hint of that spicy touch. A little bit of a bite, a little bit of a zing again across the palate. Fabulous. Now, obviously, I need a pint of it in order to, in order to properly enjoy it, everybody. So, cheers to you all. Look at the amber colour of it. Beautiful. This good pint of beer needs one thing. While I'm tasting it, you tell me. What is it? Mm. It's really soft. It's really freshly flavoured. There's a little hoppy hint, and there's that undertone of bite from the watercress. Lovely stuff. What could you enjoy with a proper old pint of watercress beer? Well, sausages, of course. Now, you don't see sausages like that in very often, do you? That's proper sausages from a proper butcher. See if you can find them as well, because you will get the best flavour. Now, you can also get watercress-infused sausages. They sometimes are a little bit of a special for the Ulster's Watercrest Festival that happens here. But see if you can seek them out because a little bit of the old Watercrest sausages, pint of beer, fabulous. My third recommendation is, well, you're all going to know it pretty well, I think. So you can have white wine with salmon, Watercrest sauce, Watercrest as a garnish. You can have really good, proper butcher sausages with a pint of really nice beer. Or, what else is there? The Pims. Of course, the ultimate summer long drink. Pims, but what's that floating in the top of the glass there, Simon? It's watercress, of course. Now, every time that we have attended the Watercress Festival over the past however many years it's been, we've always offered Pims with a watercress garnish. It is really nice when you use ginger ale with your Pims. So you've got your Pims number one, classic good solid old Pims number one. Instead of using lemonade, I recommend using ginger ale. Other ginger ale brands are available. Um, I find it adds a drier, more elegant flavour to your drink. Lemonade can add a little bit too much sweetness for me, especially when you're putting the pims in there. So, pims, ginger ale, watercress in the top, nice long cool drink. Pims. Fabulous. Watercress, such a versatile little item, isn't it? Look, it's appeared in all those different things. Cheers to you. I must obviously try the pins as well. Just make sure it's okay. That's not just checking. Lovely. There we go. I hope you enjoyed that little quick run through the wine world. Some wine and food recommendations to match our wonderful super crop watercress. I really hope to see you next time we run the Watercress Festival here in Ulsford. But in the meantime, take care, everybody. See you all soon.